Okay, hello everybody. It's Jeff Brodsley, the CEO of Chosen Payments. Um, this is actually actually our inaugural Chosen Scoop interview. Um, you know, this uh, quarantine and COVID stuff has really um, made the world, I think, embrace um, video conferencing and Zoom meetings and and things that we haven't done before. So um, we're using this as an opportunity to kind of grow our our um, expansion and grow into the various vertical industries that we're in and just really get to know our clients, get to know our association and, and um, buying group and software partners. So today, um, kind of near and dear to my heart because uh, it runs in the, in the blood and in the family, we're gonna interview Dennis Madden, who's here as well from um, the ATRA, which is the Automatic Transmissions Rebuilders Association. And I personally chose this as our first um, interview because like I said, it's near and dear to my heart. Um, you know, Dennis and I, I would say our extended family in a way, um, I never knew Dennis until maybe a couple of years ago, but um, my family, the Brodsley family has been involved in the transmission business for 60 plus years. And uh, my grandfather was one of the, I guess, founding members and Dennis can add clarity, but was, was somebody pivotal in starting and founding and being part of one of the first four members of the automatic transmission Builders Association. So fast forward for me, you know, being a, a businessman now, a new business within an industry that my family has had their blood in for for many years, um, just made me feel like this was a good place to start because things go full circle. So, welcome, Dennis. Thank you for being our uh, our beta test here, and and uh, you know, thanks for the business. And I think the you know first thing I would just ask is uh, is how are you and your family in in regards to kind of the COVID stuff. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, we're doing fine, actually. Um, better than I had uh, that I had anticipated. Um, everyone at home is doing well. Uh, business is the business. The association is doing uh, is is going through this well. Uh, and getting back to your grandfather, uh, yes, he his name is on a plaque on our wall of other important members of the past who have uh, made ATRA what it is uh, going back to 1954, which is how long the association has been around. And so, yeah, you, you, uh, you are part of this uh, from the Brodsley family coming forward. Uh, I appreciate that. Okay, cool. So, and so, I, th I think the majority of our audience is gonna, is gonna probably be, you know, um, ATRA, auto type industry, but it's also just going to be broad across our YouTube channel, across our Facebook channel. So just at the, at the very high level, you know, very, you know, short, but sweet, you know, what, what would tell me, you know, a 30 second elevator pitch about the ATRA, what, what ATRA does for its members today, you know, and, and not necessarily just due to COVID, nothing to do with COVID, but just in general, what the ATRA uh, stands for. All right. Well, ATRA stands for the Automatic Transmission Rebuilders Association. It was founded in 1954 uh, with a small group of shops, and they primarily helped each other with technical information. And uh, if they had a, a customer that was broken down a couple of cities away, they, they had a, an arrangement where they would help their customer get back on the road. That is a simple way to put it, or the beginning of the association. Uh, we like to use a catchphrase internally, get them in the door, get them out the door. So the 30 second spiel, which I have 10 seconds left, <laughs> is that we help our members get customers and we then help them fix those cars so their customers can get back on the road. Get them in the door and get them out the door. And it, that's uh, the way we help our members, the independently owned transmission shops. It sounds like a little bit of strength in numbers if I want, and I didn't know that's why it was kind of a cool strength in numbers, you know, help a, help a peer um, in a scenario because the stronger you are together, the stronger, you know, better than being on your own. And then and I think, uh, you know, as I've learned um, through being partnered and associated with you guys over the last few years, you know, one of your big value adds that you give is just the education, the training and whatnot. So, um, and I think as, as times change, you probably add, you know, different values and, and, and different, um, you know, items that, that your, your current members and then, you know, existing um, new members actually would join mm -hmm. for, you know, for, for those reasons. So, okay, cool. Um, you know, fast forward kind of to today's times and what we're doing with all unprecedented stuff that nobody could plan for. 
Um, what would you say if you had to say, you know, one or two um, of the, the biggest struggles? You know, I know that um, well, I believe I, I would think that the transmission business would be classified as a as a um, what's the word as a, a, a um, essential service. Yeah. So then they have to close down. But what would you say, you know, due to COVID are one or two of the biggest struggles your members have faced? Well, one of the things is making their customers feel comfortable bringing their car and doing a face-to-face -face transaction. And here's what I've learned from this. Yeah, I have my own opinion about the uh, uh, about what this pandemic is about. We can have a political talk later, right? <laughs> you know, I so but look, everyone has an opinion, and here's what I've learned everyone thinks they're right. Now, regardless of what your opinion is or what my opinion is, as a business owner, you have to make your customers feel comfortable doing business with you. Yeah. And where you may not have uh, a, a certain belief about certain aspects of this, there are customers out there that do, and you have to make them comfortable. And so we've had members who have set up outdoor uh, stands where they do business, where they're not coming into an office. They've developed a, a, a sanitizing procedure, not only to protect the customers, but themselves. And they make it known. They make it known to the, to the people in their community that it's a safe place to come and get their car fixed. So they get that fear or try to mitigate the fear. And some shops have done very well with that. Right. And so Right. That's, that's the things that, that our members have, have uh, been doing. Yeah, no, that, that, that makes sense because, um, you know, as I think, you know, you know, obviously, well, with chosen payments, we're greatly impacted because we're spread across so many different verticals. Um, hospitality being a big one of ours. So, you know, people stop traveling and airlines and hotels and limousine service, but, you know, so, and then we have jewelry stores and we have, you know, transmissions and we have doctors and lawyers and, you know, all these various pet stores, various verticals. And, and everyone struggles different, but I think the one common theme is one of the struggles is making sure that the client base feels safe. And, um, you know, a personal thing that I do with a pizzeria that I own that, you know, you've been to because we're local and, and whatnot, we, we had to adjust and adapt quickly. We were, we had just opened a couple months before that. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, pick up orders to go on the curb, wearing a mask with gloves and, and kind of the, the contactless payments where you don't have to take their credit card, but you can slide your phone right, right there and all that so and we've done a you know it's not, it's not about chosen payments today but some of the things that you spoke of we've we've done and and, and if and if there are some transmission shops or, or clients out there that want to talk about it we've set up um you know contactless payments for like say a transmission shop somebody doesn't want to have contact you know you drive in you drop your car off they walk away you can send them the shop can send them a link hey okay, they don't have to deal with them in person they come to the car the keys in the car everyone feels safe and sanitary from you know the, the the financial part of it to the to the working on the vehicle and all that. So yeah, that is a that is. I'm glad that was a challenge that was faced, and then your 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 um, members adapted to it. And clearly, like you said, it's kind of the strong survive. So some probably had an increase in sales by showing that they were uh, in their game. That's really good to to see evolution. Um, right. I would say uh, okay, Rick, uh, it wasn't until this happened that I really became aware of the contactless payment approach. I haven't used it yet because I, I haven't gone to too many stores, but it got me thinking as far as a transmission shop, that that is perfect. That would be something you'd want to make your customers aware of. You can yeah. use your phone. We yeah. don't have to go through this where you're putting your card in. Yeah. And this sort of thing. And I think that, uh, that there are businesses like hotels, for example, that may have already had measures in place where, for example, um, they clean the room. Now, maybe it's a different level today. I'm sure it is. But where they announce that the room is sealed and no one goes in there until you do. Now, there may have been uh, exceptions in the past, but I think for the most part, when someone cleans the room, and they leave, they probably don't have any need to go back in there until you do. But guess what? They they made an announcement and a visible policy. And, and what we're dealing with now 
is the emotions of people. And, right. and it's important as a business owner to be able to recognize all of these thoughts, even if you might not agree with them. You know, the, it's all about your customer. I love that. Right? Though. It's, it's it's perception. perception is reality, right? So it's like right. you're, you're totally, you're dead on with that. It's an emotional reaction to, to things. And I think that's, it's, it's awesome that you brought that up. I saw something yesterday um, in the hotel and ground transportation industry where it's almost like a, I can't think of, you know, oh. an industry, an industry that has done this prior to this, but there's a sticker on the hotel door that if the sticker itself is, is full and not broken because the door hasn't been open, it says this room was last cleaned by Jeff Brodsey and it shows the date and there's a sticker on it. So like if I'm going to go rent the hotel and I'm Dennis Madden and I see that, I feel comfortable knowing that nobody has entered this room since it's been sanitized. Same thing with the car and the luxury ground transportation space. You go to get in a limo and you see the sticker that says, you know, if if green, it, it hasn't been entered. If yellow, it means somebody's opened it or whatnot. And it's almost like when you buy fruits or meats from the store. There's like a date and all that stuff. But there's industries that do that. So it's, it's cool you bring that up. Well, I, I saw that with... Uh a pizza company, I, I think it may have been Domino's, uh, where they, the, on the commercial, no one's touched it from the time it was finished to the time it reaches your house, you know, and, and they made a big deal. And I think a lot of industries have really quickly adapted to this. Yeah, uh, I was surprised that within a week or so of, of lockdown orders, I was seeing commercials that we're talking about the measures they take to make certain that their customers are safe. And that I, you know, makes me feel good to be able to do that. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. And it's good to see that, you know, I think that uh, being an essential business, but being in a transmission business, it's not like this, like glorified, you know, um, you're selling, you know, hot rods or your, 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 um, a dentist or whatever. It, people forget that there's, you know, it's a, it's a day-to-day -day needed essential business cars break down. So to see right. the transmission business, which is an old school, you know, wrenchy type business, but to see that these people be forward thinking and technology driven and, and, and health conscious driven, it's awesome. I mean, it goes to show that, you know, kind of something I love about, you know, being in America, but the American dream is like, we can be anything we want to be. We just got to put our, our mind and our heart to it. Right. And, and our to it. so it's good to see, you know, while a lot of us have struggled through this financially, um, the things we can learn through this will help us be that much stronger and more prepared for the next. Because this won't be the last, you know, bump in the road that any business owner faces. But at least it's a bump in the road. You know, we're prepared for this, but at least it's a bump in the road that that will make us that much stronger. The you know the old age, the old adage, you know, doesn't kill us, makes us stronger for sure. sure. Um, but now a second part, if I might just add to it, uh, I want to make sure I don't forget this. But uh, aside from customers, you know, there's the customer aspect. And then there's a the business as, as, aspect, you know, how do you operate within this new paradigm, for lack of a better word? You know, when the lockdown order came down, it was a Thursday. I'm watching the news. And my first thought was, oh, my gosh, how in the world are we going to operate ATRA from our, from our homes? I mean, I was really, the, the, it, it was a panic sort of thing. And very depressing, and you know, it was a difficult night trying to sleep, this sort of thing. And I thought it would be impossible, right? We just it can't be done. Well, you know, then then the next day comes, you go to work, and it's something you have to do. So now it's no longer that fear factor. It's how do we get it done? And I was impressed. Uh, in our building, uh, we have fourteen people, and we have others that already have a home office, but within about four hours maybe five depending on the person every person had collected all of their stuff took their workstation their computer their monitors some have three monitors uh their wiring all of it loaded into into their car got home set it up and we have a voice over uh ip phone system, phone system right yeah so over the internet so within four or five hours, everyone was up and running. And if you called them or if a member called in, you wouldn't know that they weren't in our building. 
I was astounded. Yeah. And then I found days later or a week or so later that that many of the people found it more productive. They didn't have interruptions. And and I recognized that too. I could see the work that was being done. And I thought, you know, uh, we could use a much smaller building. <laughs> we can do something different. Right. So there was a positive that came out of it. And I think that sometimes we don't we don't necessarily you know, when we're comfortable with how things work, we don't necessarily see the possibilities or the potential. But when we're forced to make a change, a significant change, and we get our can doism going on, we can come up with some really good methods of doing business. So uh, as much as I um, I don't like this for our country's sake and for the people who have uh, struggled through it and the sadness of those who have passed from it, uh, coming through it, I'm, I'm grateful that we as a country in our organization uh, have been able to discover great ways to do business that we'll do beyond this pandemic. Yeah, that's, I mean, you couldn't have said it better, Dennis, for sure. I, it's always, I'm a big silver lining, uh, glasses, you know, half full um, type guy. And, and, and absolutely. And it's funny. One of the questions I was going to ask you is, you know, what, what would you say, you know, and I'll, I'll get to it later actually, but it's, it's going to go back to that, but, but no, it's good to see. I mean, you know, the positive in this, and I, I, I own a bunch of different businesses and I um, read a ton of, you know, magazine articles and things of that nature. And a common thing you see is that not that, you know, a lot of businesses are like, you know what, I can do this. I can work from home. And, and, um, the conversation I had with my partners just recently, I mean, we're looking at buildings come October and, you know, we're looking at X amount of square footage. We're like, well, do we really need that? Because maybe certain people, you know, you know, we, we run a, a sales center that needs to be there and then kind of a customer service support center, but then we have finance and we have HR and we have like all these various you know, um, level roles that may or may not need to be in the office. But I concur with everything you're saying. And I think that, you know, there's a silver lining. And if it and if it means that businesses can spend less money to operate their business and that means they can be more profitable in the end. And that's something we learned through this. And we have to we have to keep our eyes open for that and not be a victim of this. Really look at how to be a leader in this. So it's cool to hear you say that and and, and see yeah. what the ERA has done and learned. Well, and there's even there's even more benefit as you look at it, you know, we have people who have families, young children, and they're not in school. And uh, and that occurred before we had to go into home offices. And so you can imagine now how much easier it is and how much relief it is to a mother or, or a father that is now at their home office being able to take care of their kids along with their work. It's just, it, it, I would not have thought this possible. Now, I just happen to be working at home today, and I will for the next couple of weeks. But for about six weeks, I was the only person down at our building, so it was a little, a little. Um, uh, yeah, it was it was quiet and and a bit lonely, um, but it was okay. You know, I was yeah. all right. I got to I got to collect the mail and do the shipping and things that I didn't normally do. Uh, but the next couple of weeks, I'm working here. And uh, I, so now I'm adjusting. It's only been, this is my third day. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, and I've been home for a couple months. I mean, same with you. I, my office is close to me, so I can come in and, and whatnot. But I come in and do do a couple of the, of the uh, housekeeping things. But I have a six-year-old daughter, so I've been at home with her. And, it, and it's been a challenge to be a teacher as myself and a CEO of a company and all that stuff. But but it's it's, it's times I'll never give back because some of the things that were, you know, that I'm with experience, I would never have experience with my daughter during these times. So it, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. That, so um, back to ATRA, what would you say... You know, I know ATRA has done some good things for the members during this time, um, directly for the members. We talked a little bit earlier, and I, I think one of the things, and, and expand upon it, but just that human touch, um, you know, that you guys are offering via when when people are calling in for. So talk about the training, what you've done to evolve your training, and, and, and kind of the, the, the way that the message is being communicated and, and, the, and the conversations you guys are having with your members. Well, we have, um, we have about 24 
uh, weekend seminars throughout the country and uh, in Canada. Was that and 24 in February? February? What's that? Was that 24? 24, yes. Got it. And um, one of them was canceled just days before we had planned on going there. And then subsequently, a total of seven were canceled that, that would end this season. We stopped uh, around the end of May, beginning of June. And so every, all of them were canceled. And, uh, and so now there's training that people expected to have that we're not going to have that training. It's necessary. They keep their, their training up so they know how to fix customers' cars. Well, we made that available through a portal that we had, we've had for about a year, but the seminar was not on it. So those individuals were able to view the seminar through that internet portal. And it actually made it more convenient for them because they could watch as little or as much as they want in one sitting. They can view it on their phone. They can watch it on their TV. And so, and so where we've had that available for a year, that kind of training, the comfort of going to a seminar is you know, that's what they did. They weren't breaking from that habit. Some have never seen the material that's on the platform. Right. Well, now that they were on, on there, they realized, wow, this is really a cool way to get the training. I can watch whatever section I want. I can watch it when I want. I'm not sitting uh, at a Saturday having to drive 50 miles to a location to view it. Uh, so it, it really has changed the way that we do our training and something else. Oh, I want, I'm glad that uh, uh, this just popped in my head. What happened? You're good. Uh, no, my screen went blank. Oh, really? Huh? Yeah. All right. Let's see. I still see you. Oh, there we hey. go. You have to edit that. Oh, edit mine, that mine, went sleep. <laughs> mine went to sleep mode because I hadn't touched it long enough. This is a cool thing, and I'm so proud to uh, that our association could be part of this. So now the schools are closed. All right, they have been closed for months. I'm not, I'm saying now, but this is a neat part, and that is automotive schools were shut down, and the students there were not able to finish the semester and get their certificate and graduate right. because some so much of it you you got to mess with the parts right or at least you got to right. be able to view something you you have to have training on transmissions that are part of the the class and there isn't anything out there well all right. of a sudden you know we reached out to these schools not thinking about it in this way necessarily but what the instructors discovered, and they were really hot on this, is guess what? They could finish the semester, the training with their students through our platform on all the content that they needed so that their students could graduate and get their certificate. That to me was a big, big deal that, that uh, we were able to help in that fashion because part of what we're seeing or what we're struggling with is getting more people into the industry Right. And, and that was just so cool. I, I was oh, so that's thrilled. Great. That's to, great. Uh, so, then, so no, that's awesome. So then with that, what what would happen? So you let's just say, you know, the, lo the local, say, um, Ventura County, you know, uh, school, whatever it's called. So now mm -hmm. if I was a student, um, instead of just having to be delayed and, and not able to do anything, now I can log into the portal. I can complete my courses. I could do this type of, you know. Um, true, true communication and true working on on, on parts and 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 getting you know educated and, and learning the process and then I could graduate on time so I wouldn't be delayed, which in turn helps the school, helps the student, and then helps the overall industry, which is what you know ATRA is for. And then you get more people interested in the industry again. That's exactly right, and it was it goes a little further than that. So we would sign up the school, and the instructor would be the the main account. Then the instructor would give us all of the contact information, the name and email of their students. But now the instructor has control over the curriculum. The instructor assigns work to each student. So when they log on, they see that the instructor has requested that they go through this or these series of courses. It's not just where they were able to go on and, and 
choose whatever they wanted. Right, they were right. guided through what they needed to accomplish uh, in order to, to graduate. Right. And there are test questions that are assigned to different courses. And if they miss questions, it takes them back to the section where the, the uh, training was. The instructor can, can monitor their progress so they know exactly where the students are in their training and they can contact someone that may be lagging behind or have trouble in certain areas. So it was really, it, it's more than just watching something on TV or your right. phone. It no, was I, an I, interactive I, training process. It's great. No, it's great. It's, and that's a win-win-win for all. And that's good. You guys created like your own little, um, you know, Google Classroom or, or, or you know, classroom scenario that, that my six-year-old daughter uses to get her curriculum. Every morning we log in, we have to figure right. out what assignments are for the day. So that, that's cool. ATRA was able to do that. And then something um, that we talked about earlier is like what I love about it is I'm a big, you know, I'm a... I'm a big branding guy, but I, and, and what we do a lot of corporate business. I mean, I'm partners with some, you know, some of the biggest banks in the, in the country, Goldman Sachs and Prudential Capital. And so, but I, I don't like to lose my personal personalized brand. So when you told me this earlier, I loved it that when, when there's technicians and, and, and some members calling in for training and, and, and guidance and whatnot, cause that's one of the major benefits that ATRA offers. Um, your, your people on the other end of the, of the phone are, are really humans today. And they're first and foremost, asking them, you know, how are you and how are your family and talking to them. So the whole theory of we're in this together, you know, it can get mm -hmm. blown up. But when you actually feel that and somebody does that, it's just like that. I was so happy to hear that you guys are doing that because it, you know, we're, we're ATRA vendor members or, or, or distributor members, supplier members. And it's, I love seeing, um, I love seeing the, we care about you type stuff. And I'm sure that you're, you know, your, your general membership, um, feels that's important as well. So kudos to you guys. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I think, Jeff, there's a, there's a lot more of that caring than, than we necessarily recognize. I, I've turned the news off intentionally because um, I'm, I'm not seeing stories about that, but I, but I hear from people, I talk to people, I feel it not just outwardly going to others, but people asking me how we're doing. You did when we first started this session. It was a personal question about how my family was doing. And, and I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so well, let me ask you this. What would you say um, um, to, to what would you say the next six to 12 months look like from an from an ATRA perspective? And I think you know, really that means with regards to seminars and regards to your expo and, and, you know, what, what can membership, um, and no one, you don't have a crystal ball, but as of right now, you know, what do you think the next six to 12 months look like? Well, uh, yeah, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know, but as, as things are improving, uh, I think that, that people are getting out of their, um, out of their homes, they're, they're ready to go and, and do business, engage with people. The freeways are much busier than they were six weeks ago. And, and I think I think people are simply ready to get closer to normal. I think that. I think, uh, yeah, we, we will probably get there one day, hopefully sooner than later. Specific to your industry, to the ATRA? What do you what do you mm -hmm. see the ATRA doing over the next six to twelve months? Uh, like plan with the seminars. What's your plan with the expo? Well, we're our our next seminar is coming up pretty quick. It's um, in August, August first or second. So we'll we'll be doing seminars again. Uh, we're working with the hotels to to um, find out what they're doing to make people feel safe. We don't know what people will feel at that time. It's a couple months away, but you know, whatever the mood is of the country, then we all have to, we all have to maneuver around that. Right. So we don't know where that's going to be. We can only look at where we are today and say, okay, look, things are getting better today. If we were open today, Here's what we would do to make sure that people feel safe. 
Now that may change in two months, right. but I think the important thing is to, to recognize where are we at when we're going to do business. And if that changes for the better, where people are, you know, like with your uh, pizzeria, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're hoping that one day it can be as crowded as that day that I came by with my family to visit you. Right. And uh, that's what you're wanting, you, you know, not four tables that are spread apart by 10 feet. Right. Okay? So and I think I think people really want that. They, the human aspect. We're doing things through video. We have meetings every day at ATRA through video, and it's helped us to 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 get that connection, that people connection. But I think we want more, don't we? Right. I do. Yep. yep. So then the plans for the expo, I know it's it's your big event once a year in October. What's the plans thus, uh, you know, as of today, what are the plans for the expo? Well, uh, the hotel that we're at has um, has produced a very nice uh, pamphlet that shows the measures they're taking to make sure people feel safe. And, and they've done a really good job. Uh, they will um, they will modify that as necessary. And that's the best. I think anyone can do modify it as necessary. So they have some plans down the road by the time October comes around. I'm, I think that's far enough away to where we could have a show that is practically, if not exactly as people would expect. So you guys show. are, the, you're, you're full steam ahead on the show. Everybody knows you're full steam ahead as of right now, unless some craziness happens or you're, you're not looking back. You're planning the expo just like it. You know, if, if COVID had never happened, obviously That's you'll correct. put precautionary measures measures in 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 place to make sure that the your 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 exhibitors and your 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 attendees and whatever you know the hotel and all that feels safe. But you know everybody can look forward to seeing uh to seeing each other and shaking hands and and cheersing at the bar and maybe not shaking hands, maybe doing a little knuckles or something. But uh, you know, you know you, what you, you know. Right, exactly, and and we just had a meeting with the hotel today about about this very topic, and uh, look, uh, the primary goal is that people are there, they're learning about the industry, new products, and they're getting trained. They're meeting with their friends that they know, but they live states away, so but they get to sit down, enjoy a beer or or uh, iced tea or whatever. Um, it, it, you know, it's that experience. Now, they, it may be modified, but I surely would rather see my friends in a modified condition than not at all. You know, right. we have a, neighbors across the street where every now and again, we get a couple of chairs and we're on one side of the street, they're on the other side of the street, and we just sit there for a while and chit chat. Yeah. Where we used to do it at our dining room table. Right. But still, you know, it, everyone enjoyed it. It was fun. So um, it'll be with that spirit in mind that we're going to move forward. But uh, it takes so long to plan an event like that, that you can't wait two months before the event to decide this is what you're going to do. You either have to go for it as though everything is going to be smooth and modify along the way, or you don't. There, there yep. really isn't, there isn't a halfway option. I like so the we, uh, I like the the positivity. You know, I mean, it's good because I we do we do so many trade shows across so many industries, and you know, not everybody's uh, on the same page. And so, I, on the same page of what you're saying, you know, some are completely canceling for 2020 and waiting to 2021. Some are doing what you're doing, and some are just kind of trying to have one foot in, one foot out, and you know, to each their own. But I'm glad, you know, I know I'll be there. That's for sure. So, is it going to be um, again at the uh, Caesars in Las Vegas? No, no, it's in Opryland uh, in Nashville. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, okay. So it's in Nashville. So it's, it's another Vegas show, and that's why it's another big deal because it's been a long time since we've done that. So Opryland is a terrific hotel, and uh, they're doing a tremendous job of, of modifying their policy uh, for this. And, uh, yeah, you know, Jeff, I don't think you can succeed with a halfway – approach you either right. have to go with it or go for it or don't do it yeah halfway yeah. just mulling with it and th that doesn't cut it 
That doesn't yeah. cut it. So in life and um, everything, right? In in everything. I mean, one foot in, right. one foot out, never gonna get you. You're either committed or you're not committed. The, the, it's okay to be committed or not committed, but you just gotta do one of them. You gotta commit to either being committed or commit to being not committed. <laughs> that's exactly right. See, that's the way to put it. One or the other, but halfway right. never works. That's failure. So um, I'm, I'm happy that Nashville is my favorite season. The good thing is Nashville hasn't been hit um, as hard from a pandemic perspective. So, you know, they, they opened up. They were one of the first to open back up again and so on and so forth. So great city. Um, I'm looking forward to that. So last question for you from a, um, you know, for those of you that don't know, Chosen Payments is, is um, one of the, the credit card processing companies that does business with the APRA and many members and, and whatever our, our, our terminology is, we're you know, a preferred partner, and you know, there's, there's there's other processors out there, but we're one of them, and we're one that you know does a lot of things to give back to the industry and really specials and and just and just has a humanized connection and really takes care of the industry because we're we're part of the industry going back to 1954. Um, so what you know, not to put you on the spot, but is there anything that chosen payments um, or Jeff Broadley can do for the ATRA or its members to help get through these times? Well, the, the one thing that I, I really like in, for our members' sake in terms of that is the touchless machines. I'm fascinated by, by that idea to just use your phone and swing it by. it. I haven't done that yet, but I, I'm, I'm going to set it up uh, so that I can. I like that idea. I think that's something that you can do to help them. Oh. Speaking of phone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, to help. Uh, them offer that safety, that sense of safety to their customers. Uh, in answering your question, what can you do in terms of ATRA? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think there's anything. Look, uh, <clears throat> I hope you take this the way that it's intended. But uh, credit card processing is not top of mind for me. So, so what I like is where it works for the business, it's cost effective. When there's a problem, it's handled quickly. Uh, the accounting department, everything is flowing really well. Uh, we've saved a bunch of money. I couldn't be more pleased. And it's not on my desk, so I'm not having to deal with it. If uh, yeah. what, what few times we've had some sort of minor issue, you get on the phone and it's handled. So out of sight, out of mind. It's it, yeah. it it works for us, and I'm I'm happy about it. And it's funny that you say that, and you're not alone. And no, it's no no uh, no intent. No, you know, I took exactly how you meant because it's true. You know, credit card processing is a commodity. Um, but I, I make a joke all the time that you know, especially for tranny shops. Um, I guarantee you that the owner of, of, of a lot of tranny shops have a better relationship with their UPS or their FedEx driver that's bringing them parts every day than they do with their credit card processor. They just, they, they know them, they know their name, this, that, and the other. When I got involved in this industry, I set out to make a difference on that. And we've done a pretty good job. Like, as you say, it's not top of mind, but you know, we've, we've, we've infiltrated that thought process enough to create friendship, partnerships, um, you know, strategic alliances where we can help the association, we can help the members. And because at the end of the day, while it's not top of mind, if you cannot accept credit card processing, you can't pay for the parts that you're waiting for for the UPS driver. You can't pay your payroll. You can't pay your, this majority of America, especially now, is based on credit cards. So it's important to have a relationship. But like what you said, I, I do agree with. I mean, get a relationship that, that's, that's cost effective, someone that you can trust, someone that you know is going to be there when you when you pick up the phone and you really need them, and somebody that really supports your industry. So that's what Chosen has been able to do. And, 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 and you know, I hope that we have many, many, many years of, of partnership with uh, ATRA and and the members, and we're going to continue to do our part. Anybody that's watching this, if you feel that chosen payments or the ATRA can do anything to help you get through these times, um, or to help you during any time, where that's what ATRA is here for you guys, chosen is here for you guys, and this this little you know interview is just one way of showing you guys that you know we're 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 caring about you. We want to put some pieces of information out there. We want to let you know we're thinking about you. Well chosen and ATRA. So, Dennis, I appreciate your time. Um, look forward to, uh, to to getting together again soon, maybe at the pizzeria, since we don't live too far from each other. And uh, you know, I'll be in Nashville in October, that's for sure. So, th thank All you right. very much. Yeah, thank you. It was my pleasure. Okay, thanks, Dennis. Take well, care. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>